name is Ralph Jerome, and I was born in Jersey City, New Jersey, on January 20th, 1923. Uh, my father's name is Louis Jerome, and he uh, actually uh, is an immigrant, was an immigrant, uh, immigrant from uh, Italy. Uh, he came from the Rosetta, which is in the Abruzzi, central Italy region. And he came to America in 1916. And uh, my, my, he met my mother uh, in Jersey City, New Jersey, uh, after his military service. And uh, they, uh, they got married, and uh, I was born, like I said, in Jersey City in 1923. I had, uh, I still had uh, two brothers and a sister come out. My sister come out passed away just recently. Uh, pretty much we uh, sort of guided each other. My father was very uh, strict about, and my mother too, were very strict about our school, made sure that we uh, uh, get out of it, you know. Uh, then, uh, my, when I had to leave for service, the morning of the service, and I guess my mother goodbye, she said to me, you'll be a good soldier because as a good soldier, you'll have a good husband. <laughs> and uh, that's how I brought it my mother. Okay. And uh, I took my very well. I was back to the Fort Dix, New Jersey, and then was uh, a ship to Rockford, Illinois. Okay. Camp Grant. Rockford, Illinois, 90 miles outside of Chicago, where I had I took my basic training uh, for a, a, a medicine, medical uh, uh, training. Uh, we had, uh, you know, besides the basic training as a soldier, we had medical training on how to uh, do first aid and how to uh, uh, take care of uh, a wound, serious wound, mm -hmm. etc. So that lasted about three months, and then we were assigned, I was assigned to the combat division, the 77th Infantry Division, and I was, uh, had, uh, and I was shipped to Camp uh, Virginia, which is outside of uh, Richmond, okay. Virginia. And there is where I, uh, I was, uh, uh, go for it. Go for it. Well, what happened was when I took my IQ test, I had 188. So as a consequence, I had a basic training. I was transferred immediately to the headquarters of the, uh, of the 77th Infantry Division. But while I was in headquarters, as smart as I was, mm -hmm. I was able to, because I had a pass with the rails, I was able to get home quite often oh, okay. for free, right. even though I was in Virginia. Okay. So on weekends, I would take off. On a Friday. So uh, I would get a pass in fact. But on one particular weekend, I had to do what they call fire duty, which is what's to keep the furnaces going from 12 to 8 in the morning. Uh, so I said, oh, okay. And that would start with, would have started Friday night. I mean, so, Sunday night. So I'd be home. I'd be back. So what happened was, I went home. Mm -hmm. And then I, I, I started out early Saturday, Sunday morning. And I said, but it was a problem on the railroad now. Hmm. And instead of getting into Richmond, Virginia, seven, eight, or nine o'clock, I got I got in. Because of the problem of maximum, I got in after 12 o'clock. Oh, yeah. So by the time I got to uh, my barracks, the fires I was supposed to start were supposed to keep going and was starting to burn out. Oh, right. And, and it was winter, cold. Oh. And they, uh, the, the fires were starting to go out. So then, of course, I did do what I could. It was, it was still it was cold. Up, so yeah. I, of course, I reported to the, the guy at headquarters. And they said, uh, Mr. Jerome, you were not on duty. When you're supposed to be on duty. They didn't say, Mr. Jerome, Jerome. Yeah. <laughs> and I, uh, I said, yeah, I said, well, okay, uh, you're going to have uh, KB duty, which is uh, kitchen duty, mm -hmm. for a few days, and extra duty 
denied uh, Godly because of it. But as a consequence of that, the little mistake there, okay. when it came time to go overseas, I was transferred to the first line combat outfit, oh, wow. not a headquarters. I was transferred to Company A uh, of the Yellow Second Medical Battalion. I was first in headquarters. So I was transferred to A Company. This is prior to going overseas. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, it's the beginning of your work experience. Well, then I, then I, then I, we should, we, we went from Camp Virginia by train to San Francisco. Right. At San Francisco, we boarded the Liberty ship from Hawaii. Right. And in Hawaii, we uh, took, uh, we went on maneuvers on 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 how to pick the beach. Uh, on June the 6th, D-Day in Normandy, right. uh, I was, uh, was on the radio, but then on one of the paper came out. I, uh, the, the papers were left on my desk, uh, on my bed. Mm -hmm. But by the, uh, I came out of breakfast, I, I went to my bed, all the papers were gone. Mm -hmm. They were just one for me. Right. And all the money that they was well, no, just the money was there. Yeah. The papers were grabbed. Yeah, everybody wanted to put it. Yeah. 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 Reaction to D-Day. Well, we were wondering how it was going to come out. We were wondering about when we were going to go. Yeah. So uh, we wondered uh, see how successful it was. We didn't hear uh, too much about it except for the fact that the, uh, the abrasion was going along fine. Mm -hmm. Good. You know, yeah. but that didn't mean that there were that many tests. We didn't know all any of it. Details. Yeah. Exactly. So that was it. And then, of course, as uh, days went along, uh, we uh, we just waited. Now we were getting ready to go because uh, within the next 30 days, you were going to be headed to June 4th of July. We were, we were on our way on the ship. Right. Already. We stopped it. Okay, then, of course, right after the um, invasion of Normandy, uh, we were, went into serious preparations for the. the um, we didn't know our destination at the time before we boarded ship. Mm -hmm. But when we got on ship, uh, we were uh, um, told we were heading for the Marianas in, uh, in an island called Anahuitac. At Anahuitac, we rendezvoused with the uh, rest of the U.S. Navy mm -hmm. uh, and uh, got ready to, uh, to attack Guam. Which is mm -hmm. what we did. We attacked Guam, and I, uh, and that was right in July. And uh, my first reaction when we we, we reached was uh, oh, bodies, you know, American bodies. Yeah. And uh, I, I sort of like tar my cord with on the side as we hit the beach, because I didn't go in on the first wave or the first three, four waves in this particular battle. Right. But we went in and we saw oh, bodies piled up, you know. And then as we're moving up, we heard that the Colonel was killed, the uh, Colonel, Colonel McNair. The Battle of Guam shows we came in one side and the Marines came in the other side. We, we came in on a high side on top of a mountain. Mm -hmm. and, and we hit the mountain and we stayed there. And by the time that we were just bombarding the high, and then as we walked through, um, uh, uh, they were mostly Japanese, yeah. well, well, Japanese. So, but then we stopped, mm -hmm. and uh, but we were in mud. I mean, we had every day was mud, 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 mud. Yeah. So then when we stopped, and the battle was over. But a bunch of us saw uh, 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 where we were camped. We were we dug our holes, foxholes, but on the side was this stream. Beautiful running stream of water. So we just took off our uh, muddy clothes. Yeah, and lost the water. Right. The bad thing that happened was there were a lot of mosquitoes there. Uh, and we all caught dengue, dengue fever. Oh, wow. Oh, it's like a form of malaria. Yeah. And we were taking out of green tablets to make a little turn yellow, practically, to prevent you from getting the effects from that. Yeah. But anyway, we wound up a bunch of us on our. I had uh, 100, 304 fever for about four or five days. And 
laid down. And I had a bad experience here with a little member of a fellow named Joey. And I said, hey, Joey, how you doing? He says, uh, he's not feeling better. He says, I'm going to be going back tomorrow. Oh, and he said, really? I said, where you, uh, where are you from, Joe? He said, I'm from North New Jersey. He said, my, my mother and father own a furniture store there. I said, good, good. I said, well, I said, yeah, quite a lot. If I get back before you, I'll go visit. Yeah. So he said, okay. And what happened was I found out when I went back to my house and that Joe was killed the next day. Oh, my gosh. He was up there one day. Down the next. And so I said, well, I'll take care of Joe. But I still, when I came back, service. I tried to find the place. Did you find uh, it? The, the, they, the, they had the, 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 the furniture store wasn't there. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, that was one experience for the Battle of War. Um, right. And we hit a lady, L-E-Y-T-E. -E. Okay. Uh, there I, uh, I got my first real scare, I guess. Mm -hmm. when we went up and called, uh, they were popping up operations. And what happened was, uh, the, uh, I went up because I fought with the infantry and the front of front there. I'm fucking up and I hear cream, cream. I said, holy shit, there was a bullets going yeah. by. So I said, hey, soldier, keep your head down. And I said, oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. And then pretty soon we started to move forward. And then I saw, you know, bodies all over the place. I mean, I don't know the body. So it, up the wounded, and I loaded up a, I loaded up a hub, a, hub, a jeep, um, about four or five uh, wounded guys, you know, stuff coming out of the stomach, stuff coming out of the head, yeah. and all kinds of, yeah, and then on top, and then I wrote what they call shotgun, you know, shotgun is, the driver's here, right. I'm on the side, yeah. and I have my gun going in case I saw anything um, on my way. And we shot along on this road. Uh, I don't know how many miles an hour we were going, but we were, it was a mined road. And when we got by uh, into what they call a clearing station, where it was the first uh, possible uh, area of treatment uh -huh. by uh, doctors, it was a, what they call a clearing station. And uh, there was a tent there, and a doctor's there, and he does, uh, you know, whatever you have to do, like quickly yeah. before. Uh, separating the almost dead. Right. In fact, I was bringing the bodies as soldier. He's gone. Yeah. That guy was breathing, but the blood was in part of his brain was hitting the ground. It was pulsing. Yeah, oh I my said, gosh. Oh, yes. Put him on the side. So yeah. by the time I finished there, I thought the dog was not green. Holy gee. I said. So I got a hold of all by that by what my my driver, he went crazy. He had a mental breakdown. Yeah, I can he imagine. He screamed and uh, yelled and they, they took him in and they, they sent him back. But me, I now was stuck there and I'm looking at him. So, you know, I took one of the, the stretches. Yeah. And I threw it on the ground where I saw a lot of dead bodies. Right. I threw it down and I said, of course, I got to go and walk around. I'm going to get shot. Yeah. Of course, if anything, I was moving around at night. So I went down and I threw this poncho I had over my head. Let's see. Amid the dead bodies. Dead bodies. I could just say, who knows? Who could have been dead bodies? Yeah. But I woke up because somebody, one of the grave people, they called the grave uh, detail, they were picking up the dead bodies. And when they picked me up, I got up and they scared the hell out of them. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God! <laughs> I scared the hell out of them. I said, "Sorry, this is the best place." Oh, yeah. Okay, folks, we understand. So then I, uh, and that's when I got my first promotion. I became a uh, uh, corporal, and then I, then on the way around, then oh yeah. Now that detail there, and then of course the lady was taken, right? Right. And of course, so about four or five days later after that, MacArthur walks up. I had returned. Right. And all the pictures were taken. Right. Uh, they had two or three flowers right away. Wait a minute, now. go back. I heard that. That's right. They said the uh, the picture of him was taken very much by the American public, so he had them retake it. Yeah. Exactly. MacArthur. I have returned. Wow. But anyway, we're on lady now, and now we come back from combat, right?
Right. There's a little bit of R&R. &R. What exactly is the USO? Uh, the United States, uh, uh, US, uh, United States Organization. Uh, was a big thing in World War II. It was the entertainment the entertainment division. Right. Uh, but when they entertained the group, they called it the USO. Yeah. The USO Entertainment. And what they did, they put on a show, I'm trying to remember, in Oklahoma. Okay, right. And uh, then by the end of the show, it was pretty good. Oh, by the way, we had a, you know, our first good meal there. We had, uh, we had uh, uh, turkey and right. uh, a good meal. Yeah. And then after that, you know, when they came, there were some nurses now that were part of the USO, or well, they were there anyway. And they said, you know, uh, one of them was and said, I'm a fortune teller. <laughs> so we all got money to yeah, be a fortune teller. So when I came, I turned and said, well, what do you want? What, what do you wish you want to do? Well, you're, well, you're just going to be a soldier. And I said, well, I hope I get to be 75, and I have $75,000 in the bank. Uh, here is at the age of 84. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so she's okay, soldier. And that was it. So, and then we bought a ship again. Mm -hmm. But we didn't know what, where we were going. Mm -hmm. When we bought a ship again, we were told we we're going to go around and then run around uh, the island. And hit the Japanese from the back. And that's where the, the Battle of Omak in December 44, December 6th of 44. Right. There's where I got hit with the uh, piece of the rock. Well, the, I don't know how I got hit with that. I don't know if I got hit with that. I never saw what that hit me. But anyway. But at that time, my brother was on a minesweep. Yeah, what, um, just to give like, a little background, your brother is. My brother Lou. A couple years younger than you, and he, yeah, he joined the Navy. He joined the Navy, and uh, he wound up in the, in the Philippines too, uh, in the Navy uh, on a minesweeper. And he happened to be at the time of the invasion of uh, when I the invaded the Navy. Uh, he was in. He had his ship was docked at uh, in the harbor at, on the island of Samar, which is another island next to. Uh, so you're pretty part of the Philippines. close. They never but then he would he could stay there too long. About a week or two later, he had moved up to Bur and they were cleaning out Manila Harbor okay. for our ships to come in. Right. Yeah. So you never saw him. No, I never saw Okay, then we went for uh, back to R and R. Okay. And R and R was at uh, the island of Cebu. So, okay. so it's a pretty big town. And there's where uh, I had a pretty nice experience there. It was pretty, and that's where I got a cat side. I don't know if you saw the cat side. I think you showed me. Yeah, the money. Well, it was only a cat side at the time. Yeah. But then when I went to Japan, I had to make it to a bank. Oh, okay. I had silver dollars, silver, and silver, half a dollar coins on me, and I gave it to a Japanese store. And yeah, make the rank. And then, uh, we stayed in the boat in Cebu. Mm-hmm. I mean, on Cebu. We didn't do too much, uh, we didn't do anything with the Of course, we were already combat trained. Yeah. We were there for R&R. &R. And that's what we did until we got on ship again. Mm -hmm. Again, not knowing where we were going. Right. Finally, we wound, uh, wound up in the city back of Okinawa. Not Okinawa. The public was closed close the Ryukas. Uh, right. the Ryukas, which included uh, Ayashima, Karamaretta, yeah. Okinawa. Right. And that was the prelude to the invasion of Japan. We right. had to get some. You needed like a base. Close to Japan. Right. And then you could have what we did was, so the reason why we took Ayashima, we went into Ayashima, there wasn't too much then. I, I got promoted in Ayashima to staff sergeant. That, well, it was called Tech Force. Now, but the reason why we hit Ayashima was because, and the book will tell you that, yeah. there were a hundred uh, suicide uh, boats docked right. on the side of the island of Ayashima. The Japanese were ready to hit the American fleet with all these hundred uh, suicide boats yes. going for every ship. Wow. But before they could do that, our bombers came over mm -hmm. and blew them to pieces. Oh. And in order to prevent any of, any of them being rebuilt or trying, we, that's where we hit Ayashima. 
Well, and at that time, then, I was uh, pretty much uh, like in the clearing station, they call it. And I was part of that hospital. Not a hospital. A clearing station, which is right behind the battle lines. Right, where all the wounded. Yeah. You bring all the wounded to this clearing station. Yeah. It's a clearing station because they bring them out. They bring them. The clearing station is some went to the cemetery, you know, the grave. Yeah. And the other went to the ships. Right. And then they got immediate uh, what they call uh, emergency yeah. training. Yeah. Uh, enough to the best. During my experience on Ayashima, uh, we were we were told to report to this area and uh, for. Uh, a uh, ceremony for all the dead, sort of about, I don't know, about a couple hundred bodies, you know, mm -hmm. lined all the way up, you know, row and row and row. And it was a big trench. Yeah. They dug. Yeah. And what they did was they were going to put these bodies in there. That's what right. they you know. Mm -hmm. But there was one body, one uh, one uh, dead person there that was in a box. And it was there any pile. They put him in a wooden box. And he was with our outfit mm -hmm. on Hiroshima. And while he was walking up for no energy, he thought it was like Europe. In Europe, behind the lines, you're pretty safe. Mm -hmm. but in Japan, I know, well, in mm -hmm. Japanese, in the okay. Pacific, yeah. you know, none of us wore insignias of our rank. Uh, Officers okay. or nobody. Or, or it was like not, more gorilla. Not, well, yeah. I don't know. It, well, it was Pia, but, but the. the the Japanese had a knack of spotting the officers and pushing. Yeah. They kill them. Yeah. Or so try to kill them. And so what happened was on this particular uh, occasion, Ernie was going up, Ernie Pyle was going up toward the front. And while he was going up on this road, there was a Japanese sniper in a, in a, in a palm tree, uh -huh. higher up on a palm oh, tree. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. uh, after Guam, just right. Right. combat. Yeah. Front line. Right. Lady, front line. Right. So on Ayashima is where I got my break. Right. Uh, okay. I, I got right behind the lines. Yeah. Instead of in the right. front. And there's where, uh, uh, then when I, we went uh, out of Ayashima, mm -hmm. we got uh, back on ship again. Right. So no R&R, &R, just immediately. Got on the ship again, and then we came to hit Okinawa. Right. And that's where I got a Bad experience there because when, when it was like a show, though, believe it or not, I, 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 we all did. We thought we were watching a, a, a washer movie. Yeah. Because these these planes were going to dive bomb and this is Japanese. Kamikazing. Yeah, uh, and they were hitting the water. We see a big uh, splash. We see uh, uh, planes going this way, uh, going yeah. way some American, and some of those went down. Mm. American planes go down, you know. We saw that. And all of a sudden, we heard a boom. Oh my God. Holy gee, there's a ship next to us. Oh, holy. And what happened was, it was, a, was a, 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 what they call the command ship. My, my colonel, Colonel Panzola, uh, he, uh, he was killed with about 200 other soldiers and sailors. Yeah. And, and I don't know, I was looking at this ship. I said, what the heck is going on here? So we, we had a uh, 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 machine gunning from the... Uh, mm -hmm. Japanese planes, I guess. So I went, I don't know how high, but on the side of this ship that we were on, mm -hmm. there were uh, metal seats. Mm -hmm. So I, I stuck under the metal seat. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't have done anything, wouldn't have been anything if they dropped a bomb there. Yeah, but, but we were lucky they dropped a bomb on the next ship. Oh my gosh. Henry and went down. Wow. And went, uh, one day, while we were in, you know, in our park souls. Mm -hmm. And we got up, and uh, I uh, wanted to get cleaned up a little bit, so I looked at some waters, and, and I saw I put my helmet down. By the way, you know what we did? What we used to do here? During the night, you couldn't get up, and you had to take it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, I peed on my helmet, mm -hmm. and I left it. I emptied it. Yeah. I hold it. Oh, yeah. and then I put it down because I was washing my face. I went to wash my face. I go back, my helmet was gone. How is my helmet? Yeah. I'm looking around, and they were over there all laughing. They were. They had my helmet uh, with a fire underneath it. They were cooking chicken. <laughs> <laughs> if 
about it. <laughs> so I said, <laughs> I said, I'm sorry. I like Captain I like Captain I like I like I like I like I like I
Now, now we have to come out of the headquarters, but we're still getting ready to go to Japan. Yeah. Now, when we're in Japan, then, no, we weren't in Japan, we were on the ships. And there was nothing for to work there. We just stayed out there, and then we were told that the war was over. And the war, yeah. And, but they didn't sign the treaty. And, you know, right. So then, was it like August 15th? Yeah, right. Then, you know, then they did sign the treaty, and then we went right in. Yeah. I don't know, September. After the Battle of Okinawa, uh, we were uh, we bought a ship uh, in uh, from uh, Okinawa mm -hmm. uh, and uh, went to the island of Cebu, C E B U, mm -hmm. in the Philippines for R and R. And uh, while we were there, we started. To, uh, we were becoming oriented with what we were going to do for the invasion of Japan. Right. We all knew that we were all we were one, one of the combat divisions. Right, because MacArthur wanted to have the combat division the slated, first uh, yeah, to both, invade, and they wanted to have the experienced uh, right. divisions, right. combat divisions, to be first in there. Right. But as it happened, as we were getting ready and boarded ships. Uh, to move up uh, to go to Japan, uh, they had the atomic bomb uh, dropped on Hiroshima, and uh, and then uh, a couple of days later, a few days later, Japan surrendered. Yeah. So as a consequence, uh, by the time we arrived in the in the uh, northern Pacific, the northeastern Pacific, well, northwest, yeah. well, in the, on the outskirts of Japan. We were told that we were going to be the first ones in for the occupation. Right. And as a consequence, on board ship, the officers told us uh, what to expect uh, in the way of uh, uh, the attitude of the people. We were given books, uh, English, Japanese uh, uh, books, right, you know, right. for interpretation of the important uh, words to say hello, goodbye, and all yeah. that. And, uh, <laughs> And also to our uh, what to do uh, when in uh, as soon as we uh, landed. Uh, landed, and we were all told that we had to wear uh, we always had to have a our bayonet in our boot, wow. and also always have I used to have a forty five, but uh, also the fellows would have a rifle. But as we so then we landed on uh, on. Uh, uh, on, uh, in, I'm trying to remember, I think we landed in Tokyo, and then we bought trains. Right. Just to backtrack, um, were you re relieved then, I guess? That well, we were all pretty much relieved that we weren't going to have a fight. Yeah, the they were expecting mass casualties. Oh, about a million. Yeah. And we were told that, you know, we were not on, on the forefront of that thing, so, uh, well, we didn't know what it was going to what they yeah. expect. But yeah. we were very, everybody was elated and happy. Now. Yeah. Instead, but we're still apprehensive about our reception by the, the, the Japanese people. Right. And at that point, we were never too, we weren't too happy about the Japanese people. You know, we, right. we went through combat. Uh, but uh, and they warned us that they, uh, that we should not be too uh, oppressive, uh, we, but we should be uh, uh, very knowledgeable of the fact that anything could happen. Well, at that point, we didn't see too much of Tokyo, except maybe uh, the railroad track, where we bought a, a ferry uh, uh, for the island of uh, okay. uh, Hokkaido. And that took us into the, this ferry, got on a ferry, ferry mm -hmm. boat. And the boat took us to uh, a town called Hakodate, H-A-K-O-D-A-T-E. Mm -hmm. And yeah, well, I got very good bags, and we were transported right to the University of Sapporo, which looked like Cornell. You know, yeah. Not that I know anything about Cornell. We saw pictures. Yeah. Of and but they, they said that it was modeled after Cornell University. Right. So we, we got in there, and then uh, we were told to be careful when we went out. You know. That's true. Yeah. So uh, and then we, of course we 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 got acquainted with our barracks. I was assigned across the way from them. Physics laboratory mm -hmm. the, uh, of, of the Japanese at the University of Sapporo. We were right across the street from uh, from them. I, we didn't know it at the time, 
all I knew that we were, we were there, and of course, uh, we had to set up our our uh, operations, and I was busy, I was just busy with the, the, the colonel and mm -hmm. the other officers, what we were doing, of course, I was assigned to headquarters at the time, and I got promoted to tech sergeant, mm -hmm. and then, of course, we uh, got on with the duties, of which, which, which were, I had to, uh, some of my duties were, as a, in that area, was to, uh, for about 300 some odd, 200 people, uh, Write out the number of rations we needed, mm -hmm. uh, so whatever supplies we needed, clothing, so, uh, uh, food, you know, and then of course making reports of any incidents that were that were uh, uh, local due to uh, various reasons and right. uh, interaction with the people, which were very, very, very few. But anyway, uh, how I got acquainted with the Japanese people. Mm -hmm. is that uh, we were talking to some students as we walked around and uh, I went to get a haircut and that was a different experience. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you about that? Tell me. Uh, All right. Well, I was, I said, geez, I need a, I need a haircut, I need a shave, you know. Yeah. Uh, I never I seen, seen a barber shop in the Yeah. Time. Walked in this place, looked like a barber shop, and walked in. And I had a buddy with me, and yeah. I had my gun, and I had my bayonet, you know. So he gave me a haircut, then he started to shave me. Then I started to think, this guy could slit my throat. Right. But, but I, I, I went like this, and then my gun like, you know. So, yeah. But everything was very good. Very cordial. Very, very cordial. Very friendly, really. Unusually uh, cordial, uh, the Japanese were that he saw. And I'm not sure, did you see a lot of, like, physical devastation on the island that you were at? No. In it was fact, I was told by, well, I know, I was told, I was asked by the colonel, I was told by the colonel, I guess, ordered by the colonel, to uh, make a tour of the island of Hokkaido. Mm -hmm. um, go with the jeep and take a couple of fellows with me. Mm -hmm. And to observe if there were any Russian Russians right. on the island, so he says, you know, don't uh, don't uh, approach them if you see anybody. Just take, take down them. notes and observe and and write down what you observe, and which is what we did. We and we we went. He says, you know, spent some time. On, so we took all day, you know, and we we drove around the sun on the kind, which is it wasn't a big island, but still. Mm -hmm. We drove with a lot of, you know, there were expenses, you couldn't see anything, so we kept, you know, moving. So, uh, uh, I reported back to the ground that there were no uh, obvious uh, signs of any kind of, of Russian activity or, uh, or personnel uh, anywhere on, on the island. And, of course, you know, he put that down, he, he, that was his orders from uh, Tokyo to, uh, to find out if the there were any attempts by the right. Russians. So to, you're seeing the beginning uh, of the Cold War. <laughs> yeah, to, to, well, that, I, I, I read later on that they were attempting to uh, uh, get on the uh, right. island of Okaya uh, right. and other islands to uh, indicate that they also helped assist in the right. uh, uh, occupation, occupation of building. Japan, and so they wanted to be part of the negotiations, right. because they wanted to, uh, understand, take possession of the Kuralis and some of the Japanese Northern Islands, but the uh, ja uh, United States refused. Right. And part of that process was to make sure mm -hmm. that nothing, we didn't know it at the time, but this is why we were asked to go around and check to see if there were any Russian troops right. in, 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 on the island of Okada. But it was the only time that I had anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Very sad to tell. So now there was me and a, a second lieutenant and a replacement first lieutenant, but first lieutenant was in, was sick. When I was yeah, and the second lieutenant was on his way home. The second lieutenant was on his way home. So this colonel calls me. This is uh, we have a little project uh, they found out from from uh, Tokyo that we. Uh, all the divisions, all the uh, outfits that are uh, have been assigned to the universities uh, with, uh, in Japan have to investigate 
what they were doing as far as the, the atomic research is, uh, is concerned. We were told, this is the Colonel telling me, that we were told that one of the foremost scientists working on the head of physics is right across the way from your room. Where you're where staying. Room that we're, where you're staying. He, he, says, he says, you can see the door from your window. Mm. I said, okay. So he said, what you got to do now? He says, take your bayonet, that, which I kind of like. Put it in your boot, because he knew that. He says, take your, take your gun with you. Yeah. So I had my 45. So he said, he said I'll take, some, I'll take a buddy with you. Yeah. And I'll make an appointment to see you know, with the physics department over there. Yeah. And he says, what your instructions are, he says, just observe, see what they have. Right. And then he go back to me. Mm. He says, well, don't take anything. We see you can touch everything, but don't take anything, because nothing's going to be coming out of there. Yeah. The MPs will be in. To confiscate, depending upon your report, we're going to take everything we well, we take need. out. You were just assessing. I was just assessed to find out the extent. So, now, he had called the, uh, the professor, I understand, that uh, when he, when he had called me and told me his mission, and then he called the university, and he, he was put in touch with the professor, and the professor's fine. So, the next morning, we, I was in there with this guy, but unbeknownst me, I didn't even know it. Can't report as anything. Oh. And I went in and I said, you know, I didn't have too much physics. Mm. Uh, I only I I only graduated from high school. Yeah. And I uh, I only had if I had a, uh, my science courses if I had a, uh, an hour or so of physics it was a lot. Yeah. So but I heard about the atomic cell and I said, I like, don't know how you split the cell. Right. right. So he said, oh, no problem. So he went on the blackboard. Made a, a, a little cell, you know, and squeezed it together. And yeah. took them, I still don't know what that. Uh, Did yeah. you see that? I'm, yeah, I've seen the pictures, yeah, but I'm still not. My so, and, and, they, and he, 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 he explains to me, you know, what, how he did it. And I, I said, well, where the, where's your uh, research here? So he showed me, and I saw uh, German, uh, German books in German. And okay. I recognized the German because I had about a, I had a year of German mm. in high school. Yeah. And uh, and then Japanese, you know, and all the way around, all these books, all the way around. Mm -hmm. And I said, who are you, who are you working with, you know? He says, uh, and I didn't know, but he told me Heisenberg, right. which I, I don't know. At the time, know. yeah. And, uh, so I, I said, Heisenberg, I said, he's spelled out H-E-I-S-E-N-B-E-R-J, okay, I put that down. Mm -hmm. That he was working, collaborating with the German and uh, Germany to uh, create a bomb. Research the yeah. bomb. Yeah. He said he was working on it. Yeah. So I said, okay, yeah. And uh, I don't know to what extent he did. He just told me that they were working on it. So then I, I took all that information down. I wrote it down. I gave it to my, the kind of one I went mm -hmm. That day, the next morning, this, this Japanese student over came yeah. over and put about four or five copies of the newspaper. Uh -huh. I put it in the paper. Yeah. I didn't know it. Yeah, yeah. Poor, didn't yeah. even know they were there. Yeah. And they um and and of course I never knew what the article said. Right, until until Ralphie, yeah. Yeah. Until Ralphie took it. Translated it. Yeah. yeah. But it didn't say I was there for uh it said I was there for uh well it said I was there to reestablish communications with a professor slave uh, with the American this uh, physics community with the uh, and Japanese. Right. And I uh Wow, and I, and I was a graduate of the University of Chicago, and my friend, uh, uh, yeah. what is his name now? Yeah. Herbie Etkin. Yeah. Herbie Etkin. And it's, in fact, they, they wrote it down, Herbie Etkin, I-T-O-K-E-N. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. uh, oh, you saw the transcription. Right. Anyway, but Herbie only graduated from high school in Brooklyn. But well, he, he was uh, in there, a graduate of Cornell. Uh, so they were all... I was a graduate of MIT. Yeah. And not MIT. Yeah, right Chicago. Chicago. Right. And the reason why I think it's such a place Chicago is because here's where they perfected a lot of the experiments. Right, I remember reading about that. Yeah, yeah. with Enrico Fermi. Right. They, they brought, you know, that's where they really go to the, uh, the Manhattan Project. Was right. And, uh, that's why I want to see it. Yeah. But anyway, I was uh, 
was very interesting when I read this interpretation that uh, from the Japanese perspective it was yeah. off. Okay. Yeah. And then I said, you know, they never were told that they were working on the comic book. Yeah. Because they, and so as far as social is concerned, I did meet. I heard there was a, uh, some Japanese uh, shows going on, some mm -hmm. plays, you know. So I did go mm -hmm. to a play. Yeah. And I met a nice Japanese family. Yeah. And uh, while we were talking, I, they invited me to their house. Oh. And I went there. Yeah. Met very hospitable to the Americans. Very nice, yeah. very nice, very nice. And we, we, I just, uh, when we sat there, we had, uh, you know, I bought stuff. I right. bought a lot of chocolates, I bought some food. And right. But, uh, but they did this very nice. She did, and, uh, that family did anyway. And they, in fact, they gave me a picture of the, the younger girl. <laughs> I, I bought it home. I think I, I don't know where I have it. Somewhere else. And uh, she was a typical Japanese. Yeah. Friend, you know, but I, I was no, there was no kind I wasn't there yeah. long enough to do anything. Anyway. Yeah. There was no kind no of... Spark. It was nothing. No spark. No spark. Well, not even that. I mean, I wasn't there, but I was too busy to mess around with it. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I thought it was getting missions out of my ears. Yeah. So, you know, when I was there, to, uh, he told me to get into a Jeep, and I didn't know how to drive, by the way. Oh. Right. And, uh, and who knew how to drive? Uh, uh, yeah. Sam, yeah. Sam, Sam, Sammy Gattuso, Sam who was a mother replacement. Mm -hmm. He's the one that's West Virginia now. He knew how to drive because he was driving the truck for her. Oh. He's the one that was going back and forth with supplies yeah. from, the, from, the, from, the, from the ship. They bring the supplies into her, uh, to, to, to the battalion. But anyway, I said, uh, Sam, i got to make a, a tour of the island. Yeah. Like the final told me, you gotta go and see if there's any Russians on this island. Oh, wow, uh, yeah. That's what he did. I made a uh, tour of the island. Right. And then uh, I made a report to the colonel. Didn't see anybody? <laughs> no, and then part of that, uh, that little uh, mission, plus the mission to see the professor, the colonel wrapped up uh, a lot of notes to take to give to Tokyo. And that's why he said, you gotta go to, you gotta get on the train and take this. So he, Put in a little pouch. I tied it to my shoe. I mean, I didn't think they took the key. Yeah. No, he didn't. He didn't have it. He, I didn't see it. He just put a lock of it on handcuffed it. And he said, okay, see yourself. So, so you couldn't see what was in it. I yeah. But. What the heck is that? With this pouch. Mm -hmm. No, heck is that? Is it in a port? Okay. Uh, on the, on the the Kyle, right. And I was at Sapporo, so train to Hakadadi. Okay. Hakadadi is where the ferry is. Which would go to the main Main land. land. And at Hakadadi, as I got off the train, there was an officer lieutenant waiting for me. Oh. He knew I was going to be there. He was waiting for you to unlock the... Well, he, did, he had the key on my back and then put it on himself. Wow. That's because they have great service. Yeah. 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 yeah they you have, have to cut your arm off, yeah. yeah. So, uh, and then he put it on himself, and then he took off. Oh. And then I got back on the train, waiting for the train to go back. Was in there. Oh, all, all the information that we got. Oh. Plus, so maybe some of the uh, colonel's comments could start to get everything. You know? Yeah. Conditions of the conditions, camp, yeah. conditions of the troops. Got one guy who blew himself up, he put his shot in a rock. He, oh. read a, he got a dead John letter and shot himself. Wow. I don't want to say John. Wait, no, it's a dead John letter. You know what Dear John was? No. Well, Dear John let us wear uh, a girl or maybe a oh, wife she... home and uh, Edna riding back and forth and everything else. Oh, I she met somebody. And, and uh, Dear John, I'm married. I, I, I'm married to somebody else. Uh, that's terrible. Or, that's that's or, that's or, or, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some girls didn't wait. Some girls yeah. Girls didn't know whether they're coming back or not, so. I moved on. Okay, now uh, we'll talk about your uh, return home from the war and you know getting acclimated into society again and returning home. So, okay. um, when I went overseas, I went over on a Liberty ship and uh, we uh, we slept on hammocks in uh -huh. tears uh, on a Liberty ship going over. Coming back, I came back on a, U, uh, U, 
Matson Matson Steamship Company, and I had a I had a stateroom right. uh, by myself. It was really beautiful, you know. And, uh, and then of course I landed in San Francisco. And this was in late December. Or? Uh, yes, late December oh, okay. uh, of the forty-five. Yeah, I, I, I was on my way home. I came home to stay on, uh, as I said, on the Matson Lines, Matsonia. Right. Uh, it was beautiful. And then uh, when we landed in San Francisco, I, well, we bought a uh, uh, train, and I had uh, regular uh, coach seats and stuff laying back, I guess. But, but anyway, uh, we, we were on the train, and I learned that we were going to uh, arrive in our destination at in the New York area, in Jersey City, okay. and New Jersey, and we were uh, uh, going to go through the the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad Yards and the Jersey Central Railroad Yards, where my father worked. Oh, okay. Now, my father, at the time, was a brakeman conductor in a freight yard. Right. And what happened was, I anticipated now, uh, when we got into the yards, that I would meet my father. Mm -hmm. He didn't know about it. Mm -hmm. I was surprised. Wow. But we got in there about 3.30, 4 o'clock. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody had gone uh. But I met some people that knew him. Yeah. And uh, so we'll tell him tomorrow when we see yeah. him. You know, and uh, I said, well, okay. I said, but, you know, I have, we're going on buses now. We're boarding buses to go to Fort Dix. Mm -hmm. I said, well, probably I'll. I said, I'll probably call tonight, mm -hmm. which is what happened. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we had to get processed, you know, uh, at, at Camp, at camp Dix, mm -hmm. Fort Dix, at Fort Dix. Mm -hmm. at and uh, of course, that was very easy to turn in our stuff. But I, well, I did. I had a Japanese rifle. I had that, some of my souvenirs in my, mm -hmm. but I also had my 45. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things <laughs> when I come home. Yeah. I, I get, and I, I think I have my duffel bag with me, mm -hmm. and in my 45, yeah. my mother looks at me, my, my eyes pop when she saw the gun. Yeah. She says, oh, in Italian and in English, she said, I know I have the gun in my house. <laughs> you know? I said, wow. Well, I said, well, I don't have any bullets in the gun. Yeah. So I took it off, I put it on the side. She said, no, I want to see. I want to see. The, uh, my whole war experience and living with a lot of people gives you a better evaluation how you are, uh, how you compare with people right. in general because your association with so many people under so many circumstances. Yeah. That's one thing on the service that happens, especially in combat. Right. You know, you're all in, uh, uh, going through the same experience right. and you got a hundred guys right. and you compare yourself. Right. In the, in respect, in respect, you know what I mean. After each combat, you know how guys are behaving and what they're doing. Right. How they react? Yeah. So then I know how. What, that's where I got my confidence. Shy. Uh, you get a sense of confidence in your own abilities and your own perspective of everything uh, because of your uh, uh, your own evaluation, self evaluation mm -hmm. uh, among. A large group of, uh, of, of people. So, uh, and um, that gave me a lot of confidence, which I had some confidence when I was, I was cocky, I guess. But, uh, but that also gave me a sense of awareness, too, of uh, being careful. I was a little bit uh, less careful about my own physical. You know, I didn't jump off a roof or anything. You know, but anyway, in those days, you know, playing ball mm -hmm. and all that. But, when I got into service, I was very careful, of, and they they taught you to be careful, uh, especially in combat condition, you know. Mm -hmm. But as far as the uh, my 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 ability and perspective on how to deal with people, uh, I know most of that and got the confidence mostly because of my army experience.